Okay, welcome back to the KM6LYW Shack Laboratory Hangout Radio Room. I don't know what we call this place. Um, hey, we're going to talk a little bit more about packet radio today. And uh, I think it's a topic that a lot of people don't uh, cover, and that's really getting your volumes right, both transmitting and receiving. Uh, you've got to get those audio volumes down uh, and right into the correct range so you get the, the right gain structure. I mean, let's face it, radio has a lot of noise behind it, and you're really selling yourself short if you, if you aren't getting the best possible signal-to-noise ratio when you're transmitting and receiving. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this today. Day. And uh, what I'm going to do is log into the DigiPi up here. The DigiPi is a little packet radio Raspberry Pi that's right there, if you can see it, and it's connected to a Yaesu 2980 down there. And it's sending and receiving packets uh, over uh, Bluetooth because I'm using APRS Droid. I don't know if you can see that, I can turn the turn that up a little brighter. APRS droids. So I'm going to send and receive packets over Bluetooth to that Raspberry Pi, and we're going to hear them uh, as I uh, transmit. But let's talk about Direwolf a little bit uh, more in depth. So Direwolf is a sound modem software uh, that can encode and decode or modulate and demodulate uh, 1200 baud or even 9600 baud packet information. It basically makes sense of all that horrible you know, grinding noise you hear in packet radio. And then, of course, generates that noise when you want to transmit. Um, so on your device that you're running Direwolf on, it could be a DigiPi. See Digi my other videos if you want to build a DigiPi. And I'm just going to tail minus F direwolf.log. And uh, this is what the Direwolf is talking about while it's receiving packets. Um, it's I've got this set up so it transmit in, transmits in two lines. Um, one of them is actually wrapping a little bit. Let's um, Let's take a look at this line. I'm going to suspend the scrolling of the output. And uh, let's just take a look at these two lines right here. This is Direwolf output. Now, this is a packet event. A packet came in, and this is what Direwolf wanted to tell us about. Um, so the, the lower line here is a uh, radio station called W6ZZY. He, made, he sent a packet, and uh, it was repeated by k 6 FGA-1. We know that because there's a little asterisk next to it. And this is really just a, an APRS position report. Um, I think it is. Yeah, he's got his uh, position degrees north and west. Um, so let's take a look at this packet. So what, is, what does all this mean? I mean, there's a, there's a ton of information here. Well, first of all, this is an APRS packet. Let's, let's not look at this. Um, but rather, let's take a look at this line up here. This was how Direwolf basically recorded it and looked at the packet quality that came into our radio, our Yesu over here behind us. Um, so it's telling us that the, this packet down here was uh, transmitted by K6FGA-1. Its audio level was 100, and then in parentheses we got some other numbers here, and then some, you know, some pipe symbols and underscores. So, so what does all that mean, and and, and how can you get, read this so you're getting the best possible audio quality on your packet radio receiver? So what we want to do is take a look at the audio level first. This is audio level 100. Um, what we want this number to be is 50 on average. That's really the best uh, signal to noise ratio as far as the audio gain structures go. We want that to be one, uh, about 50. So 100 is way too loud. And then these other numbers here that are mysterious, uh, the 65 and 62, um, we want these to be kind of similar, but they're usually always different. Um, they should be more like in the 20s and 30s. Um, and the reason that is, uh, these are actually the mark and space. So if you look at a 1200 baud signal, there's a 1200 baud tone and a 22, I'm sorry, 1200 hertz tone and a 2200 hertz tone and they alternate right that's frequency shift keying um, so you you know there's marks and they call it mark in space marks in space so like ones and zeros so there's two tones that we're looking at in fact uh, if you look at a packet um, i've got one some here somewhere here eh, that's a keyboard got under packet recordings here somewhere yeah here's a good example so this is uh, Audacity. Um, this uh, software is really good at uh, well recording and playing audio, but it does a frequency analysis this here. So this is a, a packet that came through over APRS, and you can see um, right at 1200 and 2200 there are two different spikes, and they're different levels. Um, and they're usually usually the second spike is always a higher level on a lot of radios. 
Um, so these, this is the mark in the space uh, that we see in the in the spectrograph and the frequency analysis of a 1200 baud thing. So and that and then going back to these volume levels up here, the 65 and the 62, um, that's referring to these two spikes, how how loud they were, how relatively loud they were. Um, so, anyways, that explains those two numbers. And then finally, uh, Direwolf observing this packet, it's it's giving us some punctuation marks here. So, Direwolf behind the scenes is knows that there's always going to be a difference between the, the mark and the space, that 1200 baud and 2200 baud. It's usually one's a little higher than the other. It really kind of depend, depends on the emphasis and equalization of each individual radio. They're all different. So to solve that problem, Direwolf basically has nine different audio decoders going at all times trying to to make sense to get that balance you know is it, which it, is this one high is this one low so this this lower one over here might have been a low mark with a high space um, but ultimately what this is saying is these five decoders um, actually decoded the packet um, using the different equalization and emphasis settings um, these other decoders the other i don't know four or five here did not decode it um, so this is actually a good receive you usually want about four of the decoders to decode the packet that usually means you've got uh, a good balance and a good audio level um, you know coming in through your radio um this I'm, this repeater is actually pretty close um so how do we fix this you know i said 100 is way too much um and you know the mark our marks and spaces are high too we did get a good de good decode because we have at least four of the decoders uh, got a hold of this packet and were able to de decode it accurately so there's a couple of things we can do um you can see down here you can run something called also mixer you might already be familiar with that Okay, and then I want you to press F4 for capture devices, and then I'm going to arrow key over to the capture device, and this is the thing that's capturing uh, audio uh, on this Digipie. So I'm going to let this start scrolling again, and we're going to watch these scroll by. It's set to 100 over here, so one thing we can do is use the X key. Um, so when you're doing awesome mixer, you can use the keys to change the volume. So W and X are going to change it in stereo uh, louder and softer right so i'm going to start pressing the x key to get that down a little bit so there's still one i'm reading this still 100 there's another 100 so i'm going to start lowering this down to maybe about 30 i don't know 27 uh we're up oh, now we're down to 87 okay we're getting better i'm going to lower it a little more maybe down to seven getting it way down there all right now we just got one that was 40 okay probably too low we want a 50. Uh, so let's go up from 7 to 13. Of course, now we're going to have to wait for a pack. Oop, we just nailed one. We got a 50 right there. So let me uh, just stop that scrolling. So at a audio capture of 13, um, this same deck, Digipeter, actually, K6FGA, um, his audio level was 50, and then his mark and space audio levels are 26 and 16. That's cool. Those are in the range. Remember, they're always going to be a little bit different. And uh, check out this decode here. A bunch of the decoders actually decoded this packet using the different emphasis levels. Um, so that was a really good decode of audio 50. But I can think we can still do better here. Um, what I'm going to do is go back and turn the capture all the way back up to 100. That way we're using the full 16-bit audio you know, uh, range uh, amplitude. Uh, so Direwolf can study that to try and get more decoders to decode the packet. And let me resume the scrolling here. We'll be back up to 100, like we expected. But what I'm going to do is turn the radio volume down just a little bit. So I, I kind of got it marked. I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to put you guys down real quick and I'll be right back. I'm turning the volume down on the Yaesu 2980, all right? In fact, I'm going to put you down so you can watch me do it. All right, so instead of turning the record gain down on using also mixer, I turn the volume down on the radio. I'm just using the speaker output going into the Raspberry Pi. Um, so now having done that, it should get better audio levels. Actually, I'm still up at 99 here. We don't want to be up there. I know I turned the radio down quite a bit. Yeah, it's still 99. Let me turn it down just a little bit more. All right, let's see where they're at now. Come on, packets. 
This one was 99. And it's usually a really tight spot on the volume knob when you when you get maximum capture on ALSA. And then you and then set the volume on the radio so you get it just about 50. All right, so I got it down to 70, got another 93. You know, I'm just going to click the capture down to about 87 now. Kind of a balance between hot audio and hot capture. But there's a 50. We just nailed K6FGA. Let me suspend that. And we just nailed a 50. So that was the sweet spot. So at the radio volume knob where it is now, which is really only about 15%, and the audio capture around 87, definitely in the upper half, um, we're getting 50s. Uh, so that's perfect. And we're seeing plenty of good audio decodes using the Dire Wolf decoders. So cool. Now we're, we're receiving packets just how we're supposed to with the, the proper audio gain uh, on the on the capture levels using also mixer and the output on the actual uh, Yaesu 2980. All right, cool. So let's take a look at our transmission. Um, we need to adjust that as well because we don't want to blow other radios out of the water when we're actually transmitting. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I've got a uh, another repeater. Digipeter, it's about two and a half miles uh, east of here, um, but it's definitely in range uh, of my uh, Digipi transmitter here. So I'm going to tail it's a direwolf.log and actually I'm going to do grep uh, KM6LIW. Oops, I'll put that in quotes. KM6LIW audio. Uh, that means just show me all of the lines in the direwolf log. But only show me the lines that have KM6LYW in them. Um, so we're just we're not going to see all of the packet data. We're just going to see our audio levels and how Dire Wolf decoded this. All right, so we're going to start that. So remember, this is a different Digipeter. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a couple of miles from here, and I'm just looking at its Dire Wolf log now, and it's going to be receiving packets. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have to actually transmit one. Um, of course, you know I haven't actually sent one just yet. Let me do a quick test here. I'm going to send my position. You can see the Raspberry Pi light up over here. Let me see if I can get this right. All right, sending position. All right, and I was received uh, in Georgetown. And you can tell my uh, audio level at Georgetown was 98. And this is how I was received in Georgetown when I just transmitted that packet. So my transmit audio level is obviously too hot. Um, so I need to do something about that. So let's go back into Alsa Mixer which is what we're running here. And I'm going to hit F3 for the playback devices. And I'm going to use my arrow key over to PCM. And you can see it's really hot. It's at 102. In fact, I'm just using the right channel on this uh, because of the way I have it soldered up and broken out there. Um, so I obviously need, if, I, if my audio level is 98, as received in Georgetown a couple of miles from here, I need to lower my PCM volume level. So let's kick it down. I don't know. I'm going to kick it down to way down, I don't know, 36. All right, now I'm going to transmit another packet from here to Georgetown. And here it goes. All right, it's sent. Oh, and I didn't get anything back. Um, that's probably too low. There's, Or maybe there was it was just getting jammed at the receiver. Let me just kick the volume up a little more to maybe 41. I'm going to send another packet and see how we were heard. All right. That one got through. This is a good uh, packet to look at here. So you can see up here our audio level is 14. So yeah, we were way too low. So we're getting closer with 41, but we want that target of 50. Um, so what's interesting here is of the, uh, the 10 or so decoders that Direwolf uses to decode packets using different equalization strategies, uh, three of them decoded, but there were single bit errors. And Direwolf was able to use the checksum in the packet to reconstruct the packet. Uh, it found the bit that had failed, and uh, three of the decoders were able to accomplish that. So the packet went through, but there were single bit errors, uh, and only three of the decoders uh, got it. Um, so we're still too low. Georgetown didn't decode us very well, probably because our overall volume was too low. So uh, let's kick up the volume a little more. I can kick it up to about 53. And this kind of interacts with the mic gain settings on your radio too. So if you're using a microphone input for your radio, you know, set your mic gain to something in the middle. I, I think it's mic gain five uh, on this guy. Um, so you can you can adjust that too, um, just like you would the, the volume knob. But remember, this is for transmitting. So this is the input to the radio that we're that we're talking about, or we're driving the microphone on the radio. All right, so I'm up to about 53 on the PCM output. Let's transmit another packet and see how Georgetown hears us now. 
All right, we're up to 44. All right, much closer. And check out how many of the Dire Wolf decoders decoded us as a result of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the decoders. I think there's 10. I don't know how many there are, 11. So this was a really good packet. And honestly, if we're really close to the, the receiver, we want it to be a little below 50. Um, if you're above 50, it's usually there's some static in the background, uh, like if it's a distant repeater, it actually have a higher volume level. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but a distant repeater will actually have a higher volume level, mostly because uh, the gain, the RF gain is, is open on the radio and it's pulling in a lot of noise too, trying to pick up that signal. Um, so if your radio is really close, go for the low 40s. Um, if it's a distant repeater, it should be you know above 50, you know, maybe 75 or so, because it, it, that noise is being counted as, as, as that volume. So 44, that's fantastic. Uh, let me let me kick it at one more notch, 53 to 54 down here. I'm using the keyboard uh, on also to kick these volumes up and down. And I can just eh, 54 is good. So let me transmit another packet. Let me see if we can get. 50, which is what we want. All right, we got 49 that time. All right, cool. That's much closer to 50. What's interesting is uh, not many of the decoders decoded us, uh, so there might have been some interference on that one. So 49, but we are right where we want to be now as far as the audio levels go on transmitting. One more. All right, we got a 48. Ah, close enough, you know, and like I said, since we're close to that repeater, we want it to be a little below 50 because there's very little noise coming in on our signal since we're so close. And uh, most of the decoders were able to decode that packet using the different emphasis and equalization levels. All right, so we got our receiver dialed in. It's receiving at 50, and we, our transmitter is being heard at about 50 on nearby DigiPeter. So I think we've got this radio just about dialed in. Um, you know, I wanted to also make a point about uh, emphasis. Um, ideally, uh, if you're looking at the emphasis of a commercial radio, they usually look like this. When I say emphasis, this would be like the speaker output. And this, these are the different frequencies and their different volumes. Um, so this would be nice to listen to. So if you're listening to someone talk on a repeater, uh, this wouldn't be objectionable to the human ear. They roll off the bases here a bit, uh, emphasize the mid-range a little bit, and then really roll off the treble. Um, what a um, computer ear wants to hear, however, is a much more flat response, right? This is a frequency response. So this is what a computer would really like to hear. And this is actual discriminator output being tapped. Um, I didn't generate these graphs, but you can do it in Audacity. Um, and this is what a discriminator tap would be like. This is with no emphasis, no equalization coming out. You really have to take apart a radio and find the discriminator output, tap it, usually put a resistor on it, and then you know that's the audio that you're getting. Um, but honestly, if we're just talking about 1200 baud, remember I said the mark and space are 1200 and 2200. Um, you know, there's there's very little difference here. This is this is ideal. But you know, if you look at the uh, this discriminator out or this regular output, um, yeah, there's a difference, but you know it's good enough. Um, so don't go way out of your way to tap the discriminator for just for 1200 baud audio signals. Um, you basically have to do it for 9600 baud, but that's kind of out of scope for what we're talking about. So I just wanted to mention uh, tapping the discriminator, you get completely different frequency responses, and that comes into play again, like I said, uh, with Direwolf. It knows that stuff. It knows that not all radios have their discriminator output tapped. Um, so it has all of these different decoders with the different audio levels and it will pick up any radio whether it's been tapped or not. So anyways that's a little more on frequency response and emphasis on uh, audio signals going in and out of your radios. Alright so I think I like these uh, audio settings. Um, I'm going to press escape on also mixer and then uh, to save them permanently I think they usually save if you do a graceful shutdown. I'm going to sudo and actually ignore this. I'm just going to remount the file system read write and then I'm going to run ALSA CTL actually I'm going to run sudo ALSA CTL store and this will store all of my settings uh, to like a, a file that gets read at boot time so every time you reboot your Raspberry Pi or, or Linux box it'll restore all of those ALSA settings so you just run that and there's no feedback or anything um, to do that so if you screw up all your audio levels you can always run ALSA CTL restore and if you go back into also mixer, everything's just how we left it. That's our playback devices, you know, PCMs at 54 where we like it. And if I hit on F4 for capture, um, you can take it up. To, it's still set to 87, uh, which was, was cool. 
Um, if you're going to plug your radio into multiple radios and you don't feel like running also mixer every time, um, you can build an attenuator cable. Now that's what I've done here. This is uh, basically I put uh, 1.5 million ohms in line with the mic cable on this. And uh, that way I can plug it into the microphone of my Yaesu 2980 or I can plug it into the uh, basically the line input of my uh, FTM 400 back there uh, right there it's not turned on and that way I don't have to mess with the also stuff I just leave my my trans PCM uh, output settings at 100 and then uh, I attenuate the hot audio that the 2980 doesn't like with this cable and uh, the FTM 400 loves 100% uh, full audio because it's more of a line level device all right, that's a lot of information about audio levels. I know it's kind of boring, but if you really want to get the best out of your packet radio installation, really you have to do look at your audio levels. And, and one of the best ways to do that is this dire wolf log. Look at these numbers. Really try and get it as close to 50 as you can, and you're looking for a lot of bars here uh, to, to, for maximum decoding stuff. All right. Like and subscribe. I don't know why people say that. Like and subscribe, I guess it helps. Um, if you want to look into more about the DigiPi and the, and the hardware we've used here, check out my other videos. Um, I do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash km6lyw. It pays for a lot of this research uh, and hardware stuff. Um, I really do appreciate it. In fact, uh, you can get the DigiPi software that's running all of this um, through the Patreon page right now, at least the, the developer release of that. All right, km6lyw, and I'm clear.